Hello and welcome everybody. You know the drill. It's your boy King Demps. And today we're doing, um, well, it's not really a prediction video because I'm a little bit late. As we can see, some of the games might have already happened, but fuck it. Why not? Let's do a little video discussing the EU and NA Blast Spring showdowns. Without further ado, we'll kick off with the EU side. Now, first off, we'll obviously discuss results so far, and honestly, it's gone pretty much as expected. Uh, if I was pushed for predictions beforehand, I would have predicted those four games to kind of go the way they did. Heroic comfortably slap NKT, although in all fairness to NKT, they did look decent on the CT sides of both maps. Um, as particularly on that Nuke CT side, they actually put together a totally respectable and... A CT side that is winnable with, basically. They got 10-5 uh, on their CT side of Nuke. It's just the T-halves on both maps were a complete fucking travesties and were atrocious. Um, oh, Inferno, they looked like they had next to no idea. And then on Nuke, Nuke is just so hard. Um, I believe they managed to get the bomb down twice on Nuke and win a single round. So, uh, yeah, not so great on their T side, but, you know, they've never played in a European event before. This was their first one. And yeah, it was it was it was actually better, I think, for NKT than I would have expected. So fair play to them. Obviously, the next game uh, was Ents versus Copenhagen Flames, and this one went roughly as I was ex expecting. It was relatively close. Um, I think they traded map picks, which I wasn't expecting. I think Copenhagen Flames, or I thought prior, Copenhagen Flames were a better Vertigo team than Ents, and then vice versa. I thought Ents were a better Mirage team. On Vertigo, Copenhagen Flames are just so reliant on the T side, on Roy's play at ramp. I think basically unless that guy goes absolutely fucking ham and uh, like headshots two people at ramp then flames really really struggle on their t side and that's i think the issue like you can't rely so much on roy basically single-handedly smashing the ramp hold to pieces that like, it's not going to be reliable and then on mirage Ents, uh it just didn't play very well by my reckoning um had a bit of a weak game and then ancient was basically the sphinx and snappy show they were both monsters sphinx holding middle uh snappy holding lane and uh yeah that's kind of what got the job done and it basically panned out ents are probably a better team right now flames are still really good though and as we can see ents are number five in the world so losing that one is no shame at all um another problem for copenhagen flames was nikodos was not great this series particularly uh on the mirage he was huge he basically carried them to that mirage victory and then on vertigo and ancient he was basically missing and i think that's um the big swing factor for Copenhagen Flames, I think, in a lot of the games I watch is, is Nika Doss going to go missing, which he has done less and less frequently, I think, in recent times. Um, unfortunately, this series, he just had two kind of bad maps, which I think were what kind of held Flames back from being a bit more competitive. Uh, Astralis Morbistar Riders, I didn't actually watch this one. Um... But, you know, straightforward win, I think, for Astralis. They're starting to piece together this lineup, I think, with farley in it and this is probably about right blame f and config at the top farley somewhere in the middle and then glaive and zipnix towards the bottom i think farley i think if astralis want to truly elevate themselves then they probably need to find a way to keep farley growing in the game because he's basically just kind of getting better and better with this team and putting up more and more impact as time goes on i think though astralis i'm not sure in the current meta if like two riflers as your star player and then your orpa kind of being almost an afterthought is going to work but remains to be seen they're definitely improving though astralis and then nip bad news eagles yeah i watched bits and pieces in this and it was all over the place um obviously nip put up a massive comeback on inferno when bad news eagles were like 13 six up bad news eagles probably should have closed the series out and just bad news eagles are great to watch man they play like, very high tempo, very in-your-face counter-strike. It's good fun to watch. I think they lack for, like, a consistent star presence, uh, Bad News Eagles, if I'm honest. That's what I see as being the main problem. As you can see, One Flat True was their not, didn't have a great rating overall, and he's probably their best player overall, I would say. Um, yeah, that's the thing with Bad News Eagles. I just, I feel like I need to see, like consistent carry performances out of like you know one flat row and one of the others but yeah it was a good series 
looking forward to the rest of blast um i honestly fully expect heroic to qualify although i basically think the winner of this semi-final will be the team to qualify um i think nip is still figuring themselves out with brolan still figuring it out um with the orp like obviously Tag's doing it he, he has been doing it to mix success so far but very early doors and i still think astralis are ramping up i don't think they've hit like full power level with farley in the lineup i think there's more there i'd see astralis and nip as kind of at a similar level and i see ensign heroic as probably a step above those two teams right now and if i if i was pressed i would say heroic um but i i actually think this is going to be like a banger series and a pretty close one so yeah for the eu side of the bracket that's basically it i expect heroic probably to be the guys to qualify from that grand final but i think basically it's the winner of this semi-final and i think it's tough to call i give heroic a slight edge Astralis Nip, I'd probably actually give Astralis the edge just because Nip with the Brolan switch, I, they haven't found their feet yet and they still need some more time to do so. Um, so I'll take an Astralis Heroic Grand Final with Heroic winning it. That's what I'll go for. But like I say, and I've said it a few times, this semi final's tough to call. And I think whoever wins this semi final wins the Grand Final and takes the spot at the uh, the Spring Finals. Obviously, that means we've got to talk about the NA side of things. Um, you know, games so far, yeah, both of these have been very, very convincing wins for the side that won them. EG are a mess, uh, yeah, and rumours behind the scenes. Very interesting about what EG are going to do with their lineup. Um, whether the kind of bizarre rumours I've heard are true or not remains to be seen. But if Evil Geniuses do, and I can't speak too much to this, but if they do do what they've said they're gonna do behind the scenes then yeah you're in for a shot guys just stay tuned on potential evil geniuses news and then yeah obviously fury are bullied attack um or atk i should say atk are not anywhere near as good as fury are unsurprising atk maybe the worst team obviously a last minute replacement uh and they were playing against the best team yeah not much they can do there uh, on the other side, uh, I expect Complexity and Liquid to win those two games, although I suspect this best of three is going to be closer than many people will expect. MIBR are actually, I think, a very good team, and they have been slowly improving with this lineup. Obviously have the Major coming up. They're going to be ramping up to sort of that peak level, as are Complexity, obviously, no doubt, but I just think complexity have been improving definitely each time i've seen them but it's been quite a slow gradual improvement and i think mibr have had a little bit more of a rapid rise compared to when we saw them at blast to when we saw them at the latest rmr uh, and i think now they'll probably be even slightly better so i think this series is tough to call or tougher to call than many would expect but uh, complexity will probably win it um, and then Liquid should comfortably beat Pain. That shouldn't be too much of a problem for that team. I would be worried if it was. And then the semi-finals. Yeah, Furia should win this one pretty comfortably. And let's be honest, Furia should probably get all the way to the grand final and take the spring final slot. Um, Liquid should probably be the team to meet them in that final but Furia are just so much better, I think, than any other team from the Americas right now. I don't think anybody is that close. Liquid are obviously then, I think, that second team. And then there's kind of a bunch of teams just below that. I think you could throw God's Saying Complexity, MIBR. Um, you know, you could throw a lot of teams from the sort of Americas into that. You know, battling for that third best in NA spot. Sorry, Junior. I know you did a great interview with HLTV, but you guys are nowhere near the best team, NA team, right now. Like, Liquid are confidently better than you. So, calm down, guys. But yeah, I think, you know, the America's side is, is kind of easy to call just because Fury are so good uh, and they're looking really good right now. They're getting better with safe in the lineup. And yeah, just. I don't know that there's even drop is starting to improve as well for Furia and become actually a quite a solid presence and I I think the Furia play style the way they play um very like hyper aggressive are obviously has this absolutely insane style of counter strike that is so just monumentally aggressive it's unbelievable and I think 
I think their play style is probably a little bit too intuitive to ever be fully consistent. Um, I think even if Furia are one of the best teams in the world, their style just means they're almost never going to be the consistent number one. That's just my honest opinion. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe if you had the perfect mix of players who all not only had great intuition for the game, but also understood each other really well, then maybe the style can work and be consistent. But I think you're just always going to see Furia struggle to like get over the line in some series against the best of the best where... Their style stops working, and is there a really consistent structure underneath that that you can fall back on? I don't know. I think that remains to be seen. Just a little aside about Furia. I think they are really great at the moment, by the way, though. And I love watching me some Furia play. Hold W Gaming. Fuck yeah. So that's it, basically. Yeah, Furia should win this side. Heroic should win on the other side. I think the EU side of the bracket is much closer. However... And just to give a quick little look at the last spring final, which will obviously be happening after the major. And this uh, is the team list so far. And we will probably add Heroic or Ents and Furia. And honestly, it'll be a pretty cool tournament and event. I would say these three teams are probably going to be the teams after the major. Assuming G2 play up to like their peak level, these three teams are probably going to be the teams that a lot of people are going to be looking at as some of the best in the world. Na'Vi... There might be some roster moves on the horizon for Na'Vi, let's just say that much, and that team might not stick together post-major, so remains to be seen. And I also wouldn't be surprised if OG's roster doesn't survive the post-major shuffle. Who knows about Vitality as well, depending on how they do in the major, although I suspect this project probably has a slightly longer-term view and maybe would stick with the five-man lineup for a bit longer. Obviously six if you include Sonic the coach. But yeah, with Heroic and Ents in there and Furia, this would be a pretty cool event with a nice mix of teams. I think G2, uh, Big and OG, sorry, being in there adds a couple of teams who... Maybe people aren't expecting to win it, but are interesting from different reasons. OG because they're kind of really struggling at the moment with this five-man lineup. And Big because they're on a pretty sizable upswing at the moment. And then Heroic slash Ents, two teams that probably are trying to prove just exactly how good they are in the hierarchy right now for differing reasons. Ents are just kind of coming up to this sort of top five in the world level, whereas Heroic have been there for a while and have struggled to push on, particularly in LAN events. And then Fury are just looking to prove how good they really are with this lineup. They've looked dangerous so far this year, and we need a couple more events to really gauge how Fury are, I think, are going to do with the safe and drop version of the lineup, but it's looking good. You know the drill, guys. Drop us a like, a little cheeky comment, uh, and tell your mates uh, to come and watch my videos. That would help me out. And if you didn't like it, probably means you're not going to be one of these teams so you know just fucking get on the practice server and fucking sort yourselves out